Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with tonado sauce. That's right, this incredibly delicious sauce featuring anchovy and tuna was traditionally made to be served with cold sliced veal. But at some point people were like, hey, why are we only serving this with cold sliced veal? This stuff tastes incredible and would be good with almost anything. So long story short, nowadays this is more of an all-purpose spread or dip. And not only am I going to show you how easy this is to put together, I'm also, and at no extra charge, I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite ways to serve it. So let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we're going to need some tuna. And just not any tuna. I want you to find oil-packed tuna. And I probably shouldn't tell you this, but water-packed tuna will work. But I really do think the taste and texture are much better if you use the oil-packed. Not to mention it also comes with free olive oil, which we're going to need to put in the recipe anyway. So that's what I'm recommending here. You know I like these recipes to be as expensive as possible. So spend an extra 2 or $3 and get the good stuff. And by the way, don't drain the tuna. We're going to add all the olive oil that came with it into the sauce. And then if one preserved fish is good, two must be better. So in addition to the tuna, we're also going to add a little bit of anchovy filet. And actually for me, it's going to be more than a little. I'm going to use six of these fairly large anchovy filets. And of course, like everything in this, that amount's going to be up to you. You are the Mr. Robato of your tonato. And besides our two types of fish, the rest of the sauce is very, very simple. So we're going to go ahead and toss some mayonnaise in a blender. And of course, that's homemade. I'm insulted by your question. But your favorite jarred mayo will work beautifully. I use that sometimes, like every time. And then to that, we're going to need some freshly squeezed lemon juice. We are also going to need some olive oil. We also want to throw in a couple spoons of drained capers. That is a mandatory and critical ingredient here. I'm also going to put in a little bit of crushed garlic. And I don't believe that's traditional, but I also don't believe I care because I like the taste, so I'm going to add it. And then we'll season this up just a little bit with a small pinch of cayenne and a much, much bigger pinch of freshly ground black pepper. And other than our tuna and anchovies, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and add that to the blender. And please note, we're not adding any salt at this point. All right, especially if you use six anchovies like I did, you may have enough. So we'll taste and adjust for that later. But for now, all we need to do is blend this until completely smooth. And of course, you're going to have to pulse on and off to start. But eventually, it will break down and should blend up nice and smooth. And definitely, if your friends or family ask you what you're doing, you should mess with their heads and tell them you're working on a tuna smoothie, you know, to terrify them. And I didn't film it, but as usual, I like to stop about halfway through, give it a little scraping with the spatula, which would explain the appearance of the inside of the blender. But anyway, like I said, we're going to blend that until it's very, very smooth, at which point you should have something that looks like this. And please do not be put off by the possibly less than completely appetizing color because the flavor of this is tremendous. And all we need to do before we start using it is give it a taste for seasoning. All right, as predicted, mine didn't need anything because I had plenty of anchovy, but definitely give yours a taste here for salt and or any of the other ingredients you want to adjust. And then once we're happy with the seasoning, we can go ahead and use this on or with almost anything. So I'm gonna show you my personal favorite use, which would be as a spread for something called a tartine, which is what us fancy boys call an open face sandwich. And by the way, if you're into amazing breads, you should seriously think about moving to San Francisco. The breads really are incredible around here. Plus, the rents are amazing. You can get a studio apartment for as little as 4000 a month. But anyway, I'm going to cut and toast a couple slices of bread, onto which we're going to spoon a very, very generous amount of our tonato sauce. And you really do want to lay it on thick here. So what I like to do is spoon it on, let it sit for a second, and then spoon a little more on. So it's kind of sitting up nice and high and perky. And once that's down, you can top this with almost anything. And as I mentioned, this is traditionally served with cold sliced veal. But since we just recently used their young, tender, delicious bones for demi-glaze, I thought we'd give the baby cows a break and top this with a lovely little spring vegetable salad. So I just took some thinly sliced sugar snap peas and carrots and tossed it with a little bit of olive oil, a pinch of salt, and a little Aleppo pepper. And I think that's going to make for a beautiful, beautiful spring topping for this. And then to finish it off, I'm going to give it a little more of that Aleppo pepper. Oh man, I like that stuff. You should find some. And then speaking of pepper, I'm going to finish this off with some arugula sprouts. And in addition to looking cool, it's going to add a little bit of herbaceousness and a little bit of extra peppery flavor. All right, you could also use things like watercress or in a pinch, just take some regular arugula and slice it really fine. But anyway, that's it. The important thing to remember is anything tastes amazing on this. Yes, even vegetables. And if you've not had this before, when you take that first bite, I predict you're going to be very, very happy. I mean, it's incredible just on a spoon or your finger. But when you put a lot of it on some nice, crunchy toasted bread and then top it with those crisp, fresh spring vegetables, this becomes one of the best things ever. And if you're thinking, that looks great, but vegetables don't feel pain, what else can I use it with that involves more meat? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
because I think tomato sauce makes an incredibly awesome base for beef tartare. So this is another one of my favorite uses. And if you check out the blog post, I'll tell you which San Francisco restaurant I stole this idea from. But anyway, all I did was take some diced raw beef, and I seasoned it up with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper, kosher salt, a few drops of balsamic vinegar, and a little bit of olive oil. And by the way, that beef is ice cold. Nobody wants warm beef tartare. So make sure your meat is ice, ice cold. And then once that's set, all I did was follow the exact same procedure. I toasted some bread. I spooned over copious amounts of our tomato sauce. I topped it with my raw beef. And because it was round, I topped it with that micro arugula again. And of course, that little bit of pepperiness is going to work perfect with this as well. And what I'm calling a tonado tartare tartine is done. That's right. The official name for this is a tonado tartare tartine. And to be honest, I don't really care if you make this, but I really do hope you say it a few times. But anyway, that's it. An incredibly simple and stunningly delicious sauce. Whether you use it for some simple open face sandwiches like I did, or as a dip for vegetables, or a dressing for potato salad. I mean, the options are almost limitless, okay? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>